them. Okay, Manchester City against Chelsea. Before we speak about the game, there's someone going back to the Etihad for the first time since he left to join Chelsea. And he was the player that scored a penalty in stoppage time in a brilliant four-all game back in November. His name's Cole Palmer, and both Pep Guardiola and Maurizio Pochettino have been speaking about his return this weekend. Return to the Etihad for, for Cole. Do you think he's got something to prove? No, he's not this type of player that needs to prove nothing. I think he he really, you know, is very grateful with his period in Manchester City and he left the club because he wanted to find, you know, another challenge or, or to have the possibility to play more. And yes, here was a, uh, he adapted very well and he was lucky because he's playing a lot of game here. Um, no, but I think he is going to to be there, trying to play and to perform for him and for his, his team. For his team. Do you think that Guardiola regrets selling him? No, but that is a question for him. Um, look, for me, <clears throat> Manchester City have an amazing squad, uh, unbelievable player, and of course, uh, um, the decision I think is. It's not regret or not regret. Like uh, sometimes we we make some decision that always we think in the best for the team, and that doesn't mean that it's good or not so good player. It's, it's about that the, sometimes the period or the circumstance uh, didn't match, and and that situation can happen. Player want to leave, or yeah, and you cannot stop because you cannot provide the the game time. You know, um, it's, it's unfair to say that this is they are going to regret, or it's unfair that they cannot give the chance because Manchester City is doing really well. It's one of the best teams on the wall and, and it's not easy to find the space to play for a for a young guy. I didn't have any doubts about his quality. Uh, a part of the stats, the way he's playing is a, a star player. So he's already a, an exceptional, an exceptional player. So he traveled or he moved on to got the minutes, the minutes that he has and it just was a question of time, and he showed his immense quality. Janice, it was probably the right move, because there's no chance that Cole Palmer would have had the same opportunities at Manchester City that he's had at Chelsea. And you have to be fair to Pep Guardiola. There's very few players during his time at Manchester City when he's deemed them surplus to requirements for whatever reason. Gabriel Jesus, Riyad Mahrez has obviously gone to Saudi Arabia. He's let them go. He hasn't got this one wrong, has he? No, and he, you know, that's probably, that's why it was the right move, because I don't know if he was good enough. Uh, you know, the flip side of it is, if, if Pep Guardiola is thinking you're great, uh, he would have probably kept him, right? Remember Phil Foden? Mm -hmm. For how long everybody was saying he's wasting his time over there. Uh, what does that mean for England? He needs to go on loan here, there. And and Pep Guardiola just said, stay patient. Your time will come. Look what's happening with Phil Foden. And by the way, how long has it taken for him to be a starting player just about every game or even in the biggest games, right? This is, a, you know, you almost want to say a breakout season for him. Uh, not that the other seasons weren't good when he was coming in. So I think if, if Pep Guardiola felt... Uh, that, uh, you know, Palmer was that sort of a player, I think he would have gone way out of his way to reassure him that, listen, stay patient, look at Phil Foden, and you'll get there. So a little bit of both. Of course, we'll never know exactly what happened in those conversations. I think the decision looks right because what's he got? 10 goals in the Premier League, mm -hmm. six assists, 13 goals, uh, uh, I think, on the season. Uh, uh, at the age of 21, he certainly is an important player for uh, for Chelsea. But it makes you wonder if he stayed and if you look at Foden, uh, maybe that would have been a better option. I would, you know, I wouldn't leave... I wouldn't leave at that age uh, uh, Manchester City unless Pep Guardiola told, told me to do so. 21 years old, Ryan, and we've seen him play in a more withdrawn position behind the striker. We've seen him play through the middle for Chelsea as well. I know they've got Nkunku and they've got Nicholas Jackson, but he's he's kind of been the focal point of the attack in, in a number of games. Where do you think Cole Palmer's best position is, Ryan? Yeah, like if we were having this discussion 12 years ago, he would just be like a 10 playing behind a striker. Um, that position doesn't really exist <laughs> in modern soccer, which I think is kind of the, the conundrum maybe of Cole Palmer going forward. I think to me, he reminds me most of like, I mean, he does, it's interesting, Janusz brought up Phil Foden. I think they're pretty similar players, but Phil Foden is just a lot more dynamic, um, better athlete. I, he reminds me a lot of like James Madison or Paulo Dybala, someone like that. So I think 
I don't know. Going forward, I feel like it's, I mean, it's interesting because he is a flexible player, which is nice as you're kind of building a team like Chelsea are theoretically <laughs> trying to do. So he can kind of play in a number of different roles. I think probably I feel like I see him ultimately being like a, like sort of a free eight, the more kind of advanced midfielder in a midfield three like that. That seems like the most likely outcome. Uh, he's, I mean, for me, he's he's Martin Odegaard of of of, of Chelsea. I mean, and you know, yeah. the systems are maybe slightly different. I think that Pochettino needs to get there. I mean, he's he has in like a four three three where you play him on the right hand side and give him a, a freedom uh, uh, to go. Right, he can be protected. Uh, uh, you know, obviously, you know, by by Enzo and Caicedo, whoever's going to be playing there. But uh, we've seen him try as a false nine, a kind of two strikers, and although he can play there. Uh, uh, and and even in wider in the front three, it looked like that way that he was tried there as well. Uh, but I think he needs to be like Odegaard. He reminds me a little bit of him. Uh, he's not as intelligent just yet. I think he's. Uh, um, he's still a little bit about himself. I get a sense a little bit where Odegaard's looking to thread that beautiful pass. I think Cole Palmer. It's still. Um, I kind of want to say selfish and not that it's bad because, you know, obviously we've mentioned his statistics, but I think he, he needs to understand that his best quality is perhaps to find others. And at this moment, it's the most important quality because Chelsea do continue still to struggle in terms of goals, right? Maybe it's a little bit better than it was. Uh, but I think uh, if you Pochettino, you, you, I'd be sitting him down and saying, look, you, you have the vision, you have that quality, you have that magic left foot, you can reverse that pass, uh, you can uh, play the cross to the far post, which, by the way, he does, but his decision-making sometimes is not there yet. And, and you know, perhaps it's the age. Um, he's only mm -hmm. 21, as you said, Mark. So if I go back exactly a decade, 10 years from this date, I'll find only two Chelsea wins at the Etihad. Now, it's the reverse fixture from mid-November. It was a brilliant game. It was four all. It could have been anything. Cole Palmer had the guts to stand up and dispatch the ball into the back of the net for the penalty to get uh, Chelsea a point. Janusz, I noticed from that game that City went with a 3-2-4-1. More recently, they've kind of played a 4-1-4-1 a or a 4-2-3-1. Obviously, there's flexibility for the fullbacks to get forward, and it's, it's just a number. But do you prefer them with a flat four, with the two fullbacks kind of going up and down the line or inside, or do you prefer what they had back then? Well, I think as we've seen from Pep Guardiola, it, it depends on the game. Uh, I told you this is one team that I no longer need to know what the lineup is ahead of it, right? Every game, no matter where it is, I look, okay, let's see if there are any surprises. Let's see if there's any injuries. Let's see this, that, or the other. I don't do that with Manchester City. It doesn't really matter. It will matter now at business at the end of the season. In this particular uh, uh, game, I think... Uh, um, I don't think against Chelsea, when I look at their setup and it's pretty transparent the way they're going to play, you're going to continue to see, uh, you know, I mean, really three with one of the fullbacks coming inside. I think against Chelsea, that's going to be even more important because, I mean, I don't want to say there is a little bit of strength there, but I think you want to overwhelm Chelsea, uh, Chelsea there. I think it's one of those games where, uh, let's be honest here, I mean, I, I worry immensely about Chelsea. If you watch the Crystal Palace game, I mean, Crystal Palace, as bad and chaotic as they were, it almost seemed in that game that Palace could have scored in any given moment. And mm -hmm. Chelsea in defensive transition is, is continues to be incredibly bad. Uh, so I only see one outcome here, and that's Manchester City running all over Chelsea. Okay, before we get on to Kylian Mbappe, just one final word about this game, Manchester City against Chelsea. Ryan, back-to-back 3-1 wins away from home at Villa and at Palace. And before that, a 4-2 loss at home to Wolves. Which Chelsea are you expecting to show up at the Etihad on Saturday? I think we're going to see a team like the one that got absolutely annihilated by Liverpool at Anfield a couple weeks ago. Um, we should say a very uh, undermanned Liverpool team, too, that day, while City... Holland and De Bruyne will both be playing in this game. They're flying. I, I There have been some weird Chelsea uh, City games recently, obviously the 4-4, but I feel like most of those weird games have happened at Stamford Bridge. So, yeah, I, I, I have very little hope for Chelsea this weekend. Mm. Okay. Prediction time. Scores, Janusz, what do you reckon? I'm going to go 3-1 uh, to Manchester City. Okay. I'm almost tempted to go like 4-1, but... You know, somewhere there. 
But now we're at that stage where the opposition usually get a goal against City, even though they don't have much of the ball. It's, it's a quirk this season, but City usually get three or four. Ryan, what do you think? I'm going to say 2-0, and I'll even give you, I think Chelsea will have three total shots in the game. <laughs> This is, this is, by the way, just just very quickly. This is, I'm, I'm going to be looking at Cole Palmer. Not that it's going to define him in any way, but if you remember in that game against Liverpool, I mean, those are the game. It was a man against boys. I mean, he was non-existent in that game whatsoever. And I think right he's good enough. The end. We, we we yeah we can't put yeah, but we can't put it uh, uh, you know just on him to do that. But I think for him to hold the possession to maybe initiate a counter, I think he's going to have to be important. Oh, the Liverpool game, yeah. He was he was great right at the end against Crystal Palace. But yeah, against Liverpool, he wasn't great. So he's going to have to have a big part. But the Chelsea defence is as well. It hasn't been great. That's the big one this weekend, Manchester City against Chelsea. Full reaction right here on the ESPN FC social media channels. Mm -hmm.